There's a lot in this video that I'm going to regret admitting to you guys. Not because I think you'll lose respect for me or anything, but I've always tried to be a good person. It makes me cringe to say that I want to be a good consumer. I mean, I don't walk into stores and steal stuff, I don't sell anything I've owned for a long time for next to sale price, and I've never switched out or remarked tags on items to try to get them cheaper. But when it comes to a digital market, that's a different story. And I'm not very proud to be asking you this question, but I gotta wonder. Is it okay to be a pirate? Go with me on this for a bit. When Netflix first came out and pounded Blockbuster into the ground, it was an amazing service. You had any movie you ever wanted right there at the click of a button, or at the very least, they'd mail you a copy and you'd have to send it back. It was really nice to be able to ditch cable TV. I no longer had to wait for the movies I wanted to watch to come on. I had access to practically every movie I wanted to see, and there were no commercials to deal with. Today, things have changed a little bit. Now, HBO, Hulu, Amazon Prime, Paramount+, Plus, Disney+, Plus, Discovery+, Plus, Peacock, and a million other of these little shits all fight and compete for titles and contracts so that their shows air on their platform for however many years before it's booted off and you can't watch it anymore. First, Netflix had Avatar, then Hulu had it, then Amazon, and now it's back on Netflix. We used to pay a crapload of money just to be able to watch our content on cable. The prospect of streaming was convenience, and now that streaming services are as convoluted and abundant as cable again, the convenience factor for the consumer is gone, especially if you're paying for multiple streaming services, and this is one reason that I stream on Kodi. Now if you don't know what Kodi is, it's a free program that hosts a ton of different distributables that allow you to stream movies and TV shows from anywhere online. Now, you may actually have to pay for a real Debrit account, but for one payment, you literally have access to every single movie and show that has ever come out. It's community built and moderated, and there are tons of different streams to choose from. 4K, 1080p, 480p if your internet's bad, and a service like this is definitely a no-no. Using this service is wrong, and this is the part that gets to me. If I want to be a good consumer, I would have to ignore the most convenient streaming service available to me. I'd have to instead rent one movie at a time from YouTube or Google Play Store, or buy a bunch of streaming memberships, and this is not my obligation as a consumer. If a company wants you to use their service, they have to make it enticing. They have to make it valuable to the consumer. If there is no value for the consumer, then why should I be bullied into using their service? Capitalism is about competition. The best product wins. But the industries we support today have a huge problem with piracy, and their only way to try to fix it is to say, Hey, no! You're being bad! Now, I would like to counter this by jumping on the company side for a second. I understand that you have to set up contracts and licenses to hold a piece of media for a specific amount of time, and I understand that you're following the rules set in place by our social system. I'm not faulting you for doing so, but throwing your hands up like a child and screaming, Hey, that's not fair, is not at all a way to entice consumers onto your platform. Forcing their hands is not competition, and if you want to get rid of piracy, I do not believe you cry about it. You follow the wisdom of Gabe Newell and make a service that is valuable, more convenient to the consumer than piracy is. The reason I go into this rant is because a lot of companies in the gaming industry also have this problem, Nintendo being one of the biggest voices against piracy and altogether spending tons of money shutting down ROM sites, sending out cease and desist letters, and banning YouTubers and streamers in the name of copyright. All this money they spent trying to rid the internet of their property has conclusively done nothing but waste it, and this could easily be fixed if they made a DRM full of all the games that they currently own. They have a section for NES, another for GameCube, another for Wii, and so on. They can then spend the money they're wasting on licensing games that they lost the rights to, so they can add those to those lists. And let's say that this DRM is free if you own their newest console. Now, we all know Nintendo is never going to do this. And this issue Nintendo is having is not just for their older games. Their Switch games are being downloaded and played through emulators as well. And I gotta ask if that's the consumer's fault. Is it my fault that Nintendo released Metroid Dread and the emulated copy runs at a higher resolution? This is how sad this is. If you buy the game and play it on your Switch, you're getting an inferior copy of the game. I'm gonna argue that this is not the consumer's fault. I also don't want to make it seem like piracy is Nintendo's fault either, but they certainly haven't helped the situation. If you follow Nintendo and their steps against this problem, they're a company that is blatantly stuck in the past. 
It's like they're not even aware the internet exists, and if they became aware of that, they might be more inclined to implement a service that's more convenient to the consumer than piracy is. I dare say that most people take Nintendo's games because of Nintendo's trickle feed system that they've concocted in every single console they've sold, and then scrap the eShop and all their retro games and remake it every time a new console comes out, which alienates everyone and forces us to repurchase all of their games on their new platform. Either that, or find them online and emulate them. See, in my opinion, piracy is not something a company should be complaining about. The internet is a competitive place, and if you as a company feel your services are being overshadowed, you make something better, something that entices the consumer to the point that it becomes more convenient than stealing. Spotify and iTunes are a good example of this. When I graduated 8th grade, a friend of mine got me an MP3 player. He downloaded all the music on there from iTunes, and after a while, the price of iTunes cards became a nuisance to me. I realized that there were sites where I could just download music, and I screamed with joy when I learned about YouTube to MP3 sites. It wasn't until Spotify came out that I stopped taking music. Not only was the service inexpensive, but I had access to any song that I wanted, from classic hits to indie tunes. They were also streaming the highest quality music, which was one issue with ripping songs off YouTube. The quality on there is piss poor. Spotify is easy to use, has basically everything I'd ever want to listen to, and helps support the artist. And not once have I filled my phone's storage space with a bunch of low-quality songs because the music is hosted by them. The problem is the movie and video game industry don't really have as much luck. Apart from Steam, which is amazing besides all the anime titty games that are on there recently. I used to pretend that piracy didn't exist. I used to act like I'd never done it, and it was not something that you were allowed to talk about, but it is real. And instead of complaining about it, a company should be keen on making their service compete with it. This is one reason services like Microsoft 365 is worthless to me. If I ever needed Excel or PowerPoint, you best believe I wouldn't be spending $5 to $20 a month on one of these ridiculous business plans. And screw their personal plans even harder. It's an inconvenient money sucker that used to be a one-time payment, but change just for the sake of making a steady cash flow off people who need it. Now, I know there will be people who cry for the industry. Barry, if you're a pirate, you're killing the games industry, and trust me, no you're not. The fact is, piracy has had no hand in games prices jumping up to $70 on release. It's had no hand in the damn microtransaction flood that AAA games have decided to toss into their new releases. These companies do what they do because they're money hungry and want to scrape as much out of your wallet as they can. What they have yet to realize is there are people out there who have no interest in being a cash flow for a service that isn't worth it. Now, will you ever see me pirating a game? No. I'm the type of guy who's going to buy a game a few years later when the game's been fixed and they remove all the money hungry tactics. And if someone told me that they pirate every video game they own, I wouldn't really have much respect for that. All I mean to say is companies like Nintendo and Netflix should realize that the internet is already full of every piece of media that exists. It's all at our fingertips, and with a little searching, it's all free. Instead of wasting money and sending slap on the wrist letters to people, you should instead find a better way to compete. Otherwise, platforms like Kodi will be the future of streaming, and who knows what kind of wake that could cause for the industry. Then again, maybe it's time to burn it all down, take what we can and start all over. But then, maybe I am thinking too much like a pirate here.